What's going on guys, it's Boston here. Today we're gonna to be talking about 2022 goals. Stay tuned. So for a lot of people, 2021 was a crazy year, especially in the real estate industry. Homes were literally flying off the shelf and selling for $50,000 over their list price. And in 2021, I had a really good year personally in my real estate sales business as a real estate agent, but there are a lot of things I could have improved and in hindsight, I would have done better. So in this video, I kind of want to reflect on some things I'm going to be doing different this year and some things I can definitely improve as to the systems and processes I was using last year. So what did I do right last year? I would say there's two main things I'm proud of myself for sticking with last year. The first one is prospecting. I was really consistent with my prospecting to potential clients. So I would say 80% of my clients come from expired and canceled listings. If you don't know what those are, those are people that tried to sell their home on the market and for one reason or another, their home did not sell. I call these people and try to get them as a client of mine and then sell their house. So I was really consistent with prospecting. I was really consistent with my numbers throughout the year, January through December. December, tracking all my numbers, I was pretty consistent with that. The second thing is I started delegating tasks that were really tedious to do. So last year was kind of my first full year as a an independent agent. So I wasn't on a team, I went independent. And there's a lot of things that are pretty tedious in real estate, such as paperwork, transaction coordinating, even calling some of the vendors. There's just a lot of different things that are just tedious and repetitive tasks that take a lot of your time, but aren't really revenue producing tasks. So what I started doing is I started delegating those tasks. I hired my first virtual assistant and I started using a transaction coordinator, which freed up a lot of time. It was great. And I'm proud of myself for doing that because it freed up time for more prospecting and for me to go get more clients. That being said, I would have changed a lot of things last year. The first one is I would have started delegating tasks way sooner. I think I hired my virtual assistant at the beginning of 2021, but I didn't start using them correctly until halfway through the year. That's kind of why my income on the second half of the year was way higher than the first half. I probably made 75% of my income all in the second half of the year. So I basically hired them on without having proper training for them. So they were kind of twiddling their thumbs. There was a lot of dead time for them and I was still paying them for that time, which 100% that is my fault because it's my responsibility to train them to make sure they are successful. But that's number one. I would have started delegating tasks way sooner. I thought even though I have an assistant, I'm still supposed to be doing the majority of tasks because nobody can do it as good as me. That's false. The second one is, and I kind of touched on this, better training for my virtual assistant. So even though they were hired on at the beginning of the year, I didn't start training them correctly until halfway through the year. So they didn't really know what they were supposed to be doing for about five or six months. That's pretty bad. The big change that I made with the training for my virtual assistant is the type of tasks they were actually doing. So originally I had them set up doing lead gen for me. You know, they were doing cold outreach to prospects. So expired listings, canceled listings, and just general homeowners. They were cold outreaching to them via text message, sometimes cold call and trying to set appointments for me. And when they would set an appointment, I was still doing all the tedious tasks. I was doing the transaction coordinating, I was doing all the marketing, I was doing the stuff that's just really repetitive that is not revenue producing activities. So basically I had that backwards. What I should have been doing is training them on transaction coordinating, marketing, everything I don't wanna do and have me continue to do the stuff that I'm best at, which is the lead gen, getting new clients and revenue generating activities. In 2021, there were so many, I guess, shiny objects that could make you a lot of money. And I was kind of all over the place. You know, the crypto markets were going crazy. The stock market was going crazy. The real estate market was going crazy. There's just so many different avenues and my attention was kind of scattered through all these things, not really focusing on one thing. So that's one thing I could have improved upon. If I focused purely on real estate and real estate sales, 
I probably would have doubled my income just because all my focus would have been on that. The fourth and final thing I should have doubled down on is social media. That's why I'm making this video now and that's why I'm gonna be taking social media a lot more serious this year, but I feel like I missed out on a huge opportunity to use social media to benefit my business. With the new social media like TikTok and the exposure you can get with that, along with even YouTube and Instagram, the reach is pretty much endless. And the people that take those avenues and social media seriously are the people that reap the benefits of building their audience and building their followers for their business. And that's something I kind of missed out on all of 2021. I was so focused on so many other things that I didn't focus on social media and I missed out on growing an audience for my business. But that's why I wanna make more videos and that's why I wanna be consistent with this YouTube thing, this TikTok thing, and this Instagram thing. So what are my goals for 2022? Well, I wanna focus a lot more on real estate specific things because that is where the majority of my income comes from. So it makes sense to really push that forward and build out systems and processes to kind of take the workload off my back, but also bring in more business and allow more revenue to be generated. So my first goal is I want to sell $10 million worth of real estate. You know, being a real estate agent, we get commissions for the homes we sell. And in total, I want to sell $10 million of real estate. That's not $10 million in commissions. That's just total amount sold. So if my commission is 3%, on the, that 10 million, that would be $300,000 of revenue generated. I also wanna flip four houses. So I am near the end of my first flip. It's about to close here in the next week or so. And I wanna flip four houses. I think one per quarter is realistic. You know, if I can wrap these funds, these proceeds that I get from the flip and put it into the next one, I'll be able to do one per quarter. So I want to flip four houses this year. I think that'd be really cool and it'd be a really awesome learning experience so I can do more in the future as well. And one that I'm really excited about is growing on social media. There's honestly so many benefits of having a big following. Not only that you can monetize that following through courses, through products, through memberships, you can use that following following for other things as well. Like for my example, eventually I want to build a huge real estate portfolio for, you know, like rental property, Airbnbs, more flips, anything to do with real estate investments, I want to build it. And to do that for anybody, they're going to need a lot of money. And in my opinion, one of the easiest ways to get around a lot of money is to have a big following. If you have a big enough following, these people know, like, and trust you. They consume your content. They know what you're about. And if they're interested, they might be willing to lend to you. The more lenders and more money you have, the more real estate deals you can do. And that's really what I'm interested in. That's like the cherry on top for me. So this year, I really want to focus on building a big social following, mainly on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. So those are my goals for 2022. I'm really excited to see how close we can get to them, if we can achieve them, or even surpass them. Until next time, guys, that's it for this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.